Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn about, when to use Division 2. And understand the scope of Division 2 properly. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scootoid.thinkific.com. The scope part, like what exactly is covered? Okay, which kind of equipments are covered in Division 2? It will be very similar to what you have seen in Division 1. Okay. So it's a it's for pressure vessel, right? So again, the purpose of these containers are to contain pressure, maybe internal or external, but pressure is the main load for which we are designing. Then source of pressure may be external which is most of the cases the source of pressure will be external right because we are using some pump to uh, make the flow so whatever pressure we are maintaining through that pump that will be going into the vessel also right so it's it's called external source are you getting it now if this is external source any example of internal source of pressure can you give me any example of internal source of pressure? If, because Mac, most of the thing you'll see is because of external source. Okay. So flow, when pressure is coming or the flow is coming to the pressure vessel, it's already with some pressure and temperature. Reactors, even static head may be called as, you know, internal source. So reactors where, uh, you know, in those kind of reactor where that reaction is happening inside. You are burning something. Okay. You are burning something, then it will be, you know, uh, considered as a internal source. Okay. Uh, see, expanding of gas. Uh, see, always remember when you are doing any operation okay, in pressure vessel. So we talk about static case. Static case means we will not talk about start or end, where you know, even if you consider in the start, your pressure and temperature both will gradually rise. Right? It will not be sudden increase in pressure. It will be gradually rising. But we don't design for this gradual rise. Okay? And whatever gases are there, where it will be inserted in the start, the pressure is low. So, we will be having particular volume. Keep, uh, you know, and pressure will keep on increasing. The volume will be you know, reducing. So, we will talk about static case. Any pressure vessel when we design that is the reason it's called static uh, equipment also so that is also one reason we'll talk about static case you know, where it has already in operation so in operation that gases expanding will not happen next okay application of heat now the application of heat also may be because of the liquid or maybe a uh, indirect from external you are having some coils okay or uh, you are having uh, you know, jacket yes so that may be you know, creating uh, temperature which is seen by that vessel so that will be called as external source great and definitely when you are designing a, a pressure vessel it needs to be classified okay as class one or class two so it is not our responsibility if our, we are a manufacturer to design the class. It is the user who selects whether class 1 is applicable or class 2 is applicable. Okay? So it's always responsibility of the user. So they need to specify that when they are giving the UDS to you, whether it's class 1 or class 2. Pressure, very similar to what we have in division 1. At least 15 PSI. Okay, in gauge terms, pressure should be there, right? Otherwise, uh, you know, it can be considered as a uh, equipment which is not any critical and uh, you know, does not require so many rules to design. So it is giving at least 15 PSI pressure is there, then you can take. Fixed location, the installation shall be at fixed. Okay, it should not be moving. So that is why it's static right so these are the you know examples of static fixed location now there can be vessels 
who are installed on a ship right so now the ship is moving your equipment may be static and the operation is static the intention of all the operation is static but everything is placed on a ship or a bus okay in in that case there will be some additional requirements which need to be done but those kind of vessel can also be designed with division 2 okay so that is the within the scope of calculation now direct firing is again one example where the pressure source is internal okay so where the firing it's nothing but kind of a reactor where that reaction is happening firing is happening so that vessels can be designed as per division 2 in case they are out of scope of section 1 or section 3 or section 4 because all these three code also talks about uh, indirect firing vessels so in because of some reason if they are out of scope of these codes then you can use division 2 to qualify them so vessels in which steam is generated okay so like heat exchanger uh, or different applications of steam that also will be in in the scope any high pressure vessel okay so in additional requirements which uh, is applicable for high pressure that is included so in division 2 there is no upper limit of pressure okay so you remember that no upper limit for pressure but there is a catch you know, which is there you know for this so what do you think is the upper limit for division 2 do you think there is an upper limit right so do you think there is an upper limit if yes then what is the value of that upper limit of the pressure even though there is no specific upper limit what do you think is there anything mentioned about upper limit for division 1 it is 3000 psi or 20 mp what about division 2 whether there is any limit for division 2 please remember okay so let us first talk about division 1 if you read the clause where 3000 is mentioned as a you know, upper limit you will say that you will read it further then you will say that it is not a hard rule okay it is a kind of rule which you can overrule it's a, not a strict you know, shall be kind of thing is not there okay so what it says that if you are having same thing is there for division 2 also but 10,000 you know here also you see there is no specific limit for upper okay but now what is the catch okay if code is not giving us a hard boundary either for 10,000 which is there for division 2 and 3,000 for division 1 what is the logic still should we consider that as a very hard boundary for pressure or not what will happen if division 1 you are designing more than 3000 uh, psi then code writes that you need to meet the additional requirement for high pressure it will write a very brief statement that if the pressure is more than this you uh, meet the additional requirements for high pressure now for writing that is very simple but now you think as a pressure vessel engineer how you will meet that statement like if you are using division 1 for 3000 psi what do you think will follow for that for more than 3000 psi because code is not giving you any hard guideline that if you are going beyond that pressure why you are not uh, what are the rules which needs to be followed it is says that it says that you need to follow some additional routes for high pressure but does not talk about any guideline do you think it is very much difficult for us to justify that if you are using division one there is no other guideline than what is very much given in division two okay same thing happens for division two also more than 10,000 psi there is another code which is division three okay so it will be better to go for division three because you can justify right because it's clearly mentioned 
if I'm using division two, I don't have like in, instead of going to division three, I don't have any other means to justify that additional requirement for high pressure. I cannot justify that. What are those additional requirements? So anyway, we have to follow the higher code. Okay, so why not to follow it completely? So if you are, if you have to design for more than three thousand psi, if you have to go with division two, go with division two completely. If there is a gray line. Okay, that is what I'm trying to say. There is a gray line. Okay, and as a designer, gray line is very difficult for us, right? Uh, many times, uh, how many times you have heard of this statement? Design with good engineering practice instead of if somebody is saying uh, design with division one, someone is saying design with good engineering practice. Which one is difficult? Good engineering practice is difficult, right? Because it is not accumulating, you know. So you have to uh, see which code first of all will be applicable. Okay, so you know, they are your actual engineering uh you know, comes into play that you have to apply all your mind whether the code application which you are doing that you have to do the selection properly okay find the rules which are used uh in most of the time because whatever you are going to select that may be questioned okay if you are using uh division one there is not nothing about to question right you can justify you know the clauses everybody knows about the clauses it becomes really easier for us, right? But good engineering practice or all the gray areas where code is not talking about anything very clearly, it becomes a really uh, you know, difficult zone. So as a engineer, we should try to be or uh, consider this as a boundary. So now how you should read those limitations, even though they are in gray area, like 3000, you consider that as a fixed boundary beyond that you just go with division two no questions asked 10,000 psi go for division three making sense so keep a hard line for you don't you know for gray area convert that into a hard line which you can justify same thing like we discussed greater than 10,000 psi we should consider division three okay so for us it's a hard line Go for division three. I'm not saying to be considered, but please consider because that will make your life easier. Now, geometrical. Okay. So many of you might be aware that if a pressure vessel is there, what is my geometrical limit? Okay, we saw the limits related to pressure and you know, the application part of it. Now, what is the limit okay, in a pressure vessel in terms of geometry? Okay. So if this is my pressure vessel, okay, and this is how it has been given, what will be the limit as per code of this equipment? Limit is definitely uh, you know, to be considered at this portion because that is where you know, geometrical limit is coming into picture. So up to the nozzle neck, first welded connection to first flange but there is here there is no flange so if my flange is coming here then now at this location a flange is coming okay, and there is piping connected with us so what is that it is the first welded circumferential weight remember that first circumferential weld or if flange is coming then first sealing surface both are applicable whatever is coming first okay so that can be considered as the limit now client can give you or increase the limit for you okay now if in the client document so that is also one uh, part of giving that uds user design specification uh, the limit is to be explained that what is the boundary limit if my flange you know, is here and the client has indicated the limit till here. He is saying that till here your code is uh, applicable, then this point will become the limit. Okay, so client can increase your limit, but as per code, this is if nothing is given, you can apply this. Okay. 
what is a if there is a threaded joint instead of uh, you know any weld or flange it's a threaded connection so that first threaded connection also becomes a limit okay the geometrical limit for applying the code so this is your limit flange we have already discussed if there is a flange coming then definitely first ceiling surface or the first flange will be considered as the geometrical limit now if there is a instrument getting connected okay, like this you might definitely see uh, I, might, I might have seen an equipment which is directly connected with the flange in that case also that first gasketed joint okay, or the ceiling surface remember the word proprietary connection okay, so proprietary connection is like it is used for fittings or a gauges which are or a proprietary equipment which is getting connected okay. so the first uh, ceiling surface or the gasketed joint will become part of the scope now what about if we are welding a non-pressure part like a lug whether lug will be considered as a scope and remember this is applicable for division one also there is no change in the scope okay. so if you are learning for division two same is applicable for division one what do you think if lug is directly welded and do you think the code will be applied for that lifting lug also so the answer is yes and definitely there are some limitations are there but that is yes okay so it has to be included okay now what if so got that right it, it, if it is directly getting welded with internal or external so now it may be applicable for any uh if for internals also you are having any attachment with uh, directly welding it then also it will be part of your uh, pressure vessel okay so that material will be uh, following the same rule for pressure part okay. if it is a blind flange with fastener then everything of the blind flange and fastener will be also included in the code okay if it's a blind flange fastener also will be included and cover also will be part for in-depth training and to learn more about these courses register with the link in the description